the dream MMO. I mean, come on, it's something we've been talking about for such a long time. And the one that obviously springs to mind is Ashes of Creation, right? The big MMO, it's going to be more player driven, it's going to bring new things and some old things back to the genre. People have been super hyped, but obviously making things takes time and Ashes of Creation is not out yet. Well, we've got another very interesting thing that's came up. Its initial showing is certainly visually dazzling, grand in scale, and does come from some pretty damn good pedigree. I would say especially ex-CCP staff who are actually still working in Reykjavik, which is uh, the capital of Iceland. And when you think about say, some of the player-driven promise of a game like uh, Ashes of Creation, and you then think of the amazing player-driven world of EVE Online, you start to think, oh boy, what if these things combined? And that is what we are going to talk about today, right? So then, this may be a little bit away. There may have to be a, a slight downgrade in ambition, but, uh, well, this is a cloud-based fantasy MMO designed to have a player economy like EVE Online. Now, if you see cloud-based and get really scared, I would say it is probably more a reflection that they want to make something truly large and that they will have to tap into, uh, let's just say, a bit more compute to actually make that happen. So, I don't think uh, this should be interpreted as like, oh, it's a streaming game. No, it's it's not like that. It's basically just leveraging those big cloud platforms to uh, essentially do some pretty cool shit. Now, they had interviews with PC Gamer, Eurogamer, and Polygon. There's a massive lineage behind it, and that game is called PAX Day. And when you actually take a look at it, I mean, the music is honestly gorgeous. Any time where... So this is all in-engine footage. I think you can absolutely see why, and this has not went full viral yet. It's only got 25k uh, views in YouTube, but I'm fairly sure that this will go viral because uh, I have seen in those more niche sites that love their big MMOs, I have seen giga hype. Again, this is almost like a milestone in the future, a waypoint, a thing for people to look up to. Um, I think another game that really conjures that... Uh, you know, conjures that for me would obviously be Star Citizen from uh, Cloud Imperium Games. Now, obviously, that is rife with issues and not all things have went well. I would say you can actually log into Star Citizen and uh, play. And uh, to be honest, if you're uh, just a little bit high, it is a pretty damn good immersive experience. Um, but obviously, the thing there was grand scale, grand promise. This sort of MMO that somebody could think, wow. I aspire to play this in the future. And I think that essentially with the player-driven economy and some things that you're going to find out about is what these developers are actually going up for. And what we're going to do today is work out everything there is to know about this MMO and what a realistic take on it would be. Now, today's video is not brought to you by a sponsor. It's actually brought to you by The Pill Beyond, which is the video game that our team made because yes, we're also a game development studio. Uh, it's went down really, really well. The Bill Beyond is a uh, survival-themed narrative role-playing game, right? So it's that sort of thing. I know a lot of people have seen it and thought, oh, Frostpunk. I would say if you like the vibe and the tone of Frostpunk, then you'll probably actually really enjoy the Pale Beyond, but obviously don't expect a city builder uh, or, or that kind of thing. So, you know, resource management, team management, actually taxing your own personal social skills. It's went down really well with players. We have squashed so many of the... We had a methodology error that led to some bugs on launch that I am really punching myself for. But with those solved, I think we're in a really awesome state. And uh, yeah... You know, if you want to support us, then I would say uh, consider picking up the game on Steam with the link down below and leaving an honest review. And uh, that is what helps us. And a massive thank you to everybody who supported the game thus far. Both us and our publisher are absolutely chuffed with things. Okay, so what is Pax Day? Well, it loosely translates to Peace Deity in Latin. But as a video game, what is it? Well, the vision of a living fantasy world inspired by the traditions and legends of the medieval era. Here, myths are real, ghosts exist, and magic is unquestioned. You know, you almost think about that uh, thing New World was trying to do. Obviously, it had this more... Uh, 
sort of sanitized conquistador vibe, I think is sort of what they were going for. Whereas here, I think they are really trying to go for true player-driven secondary world. If the world of New World is like, you know, this little chunk here, I think they are going for, uh, no, this is a fantasy real world and it's EVE Online, which would make sense. It's from ex-EVE developers. Now, I have played EVE, I would say, for about 30, 40 hours. Um, some of my friends are actually big time EVE players. The sorts of player-driven stories that happen in EVE are utterly insane. I mean, I would recommend. There's a there's a fun doc put together called, Cl I think it's Clarion Call 4. It's this series of docs from uh, Rooks and Kings, who are a EVE Online Corp, and they do some pretty damn cool things. One of them actually involves a technique that um, is named after a device that in uh, Northern Irish history is rather relevant, but that I can't specifically say on YouTube. But if you know what I mean, you know what I mean. And it just shows the sorts of things that are possible in games like EVE Online, because honestly, there really is not that much like EVE Online. If you've been around EVE, then I think you'll understand that the idea of a fantasy EVE Online is it is the wet dream. It is what a space not like me would really want from a Star Citizen or an EVE Online kind of here. That's obviously a lot of the promise of Ashes of Creation as well. I think here we're just seeing a pretty different approach uh, to that problem. And the good thing is because there's no way to pre-order the game, it's reasonable to talk about it because there's no risk of, uh, you know, anybody being a cajoled into a pre-purchase that ultimately won't go anywhere. Or maybe a situation like with, uh, you know, Star Citizen, where you may think that a timeline exists when you make a purchase, but then the timeline turns out to actually be quite different. So they say that their belief in human interaction is the really the ultimate source of the fun, and that is why they are building PAX Day as a sandbox where players are free to set their own goals and they're doing it at true MMO scale. An open world playground where you can build your home, create a thriving village with your friends, and engage with thousands of other players to make the world your own. So it is a big social sandbox MMO, an open world where players are, you know, venturing out of the safety of their settlements into a wider world that is more full of danger, but not in the way that it's crammed full of NPCs. There are monsters and stuff, but NPCs in the way you traditionally see them in an MMO, really that seems to be less of a thing. And funny enough, they have the peaceful heartlands and the dangerous wilderness. Now, obviously, if you've been a RuneScape player, you'll know about, you know, PKing people in Wildy with your, uh, your poisoned uh, dragon dagger. At least that's what I was back when I played. Um, but this actually has a strong analogy to EVE Online. In EVE Online, right, you have uh, you have high sec, I think it's high sec, mid sec, low sec, and null sec. Um, basically, in EVE Online, there's the EVE place called Concord, and if you do nasty things in a high sec zone, uh, they will just appear and kill you. But null sec, like null sec, it's lawless. It's all player driven. And you know the way you might see that some crazy EVE Online war or heist has appeared on the front page of PC Gamer and it's this crazy story of, of sabotage and, and skullduggery and madness. That happens in null sec evidently they're having a peaceful heartlands where I think you're going to be starting your journey, uh, the sort of safe place, but then if you want to dip out into the craziness, they're going to support that. So in the heartlands, you can build your own homes as a part of a wider village or clan, link these villages into bigger networks with resources being created by players, including clothes, food, weapons, armor, that sort of thing. And that means you can take up a EVE Online style role, right? You can be the clan blacksmith, armoring and outfitting people, being a part of a wider player economy. If they're taking inspiration from EVE, then I would very much imagine you're going to have a situation of like, uh, well, you know, somebody's got to transport the goods. All of those stages of the player-driven economy, which is one of the coolest things about EVE. I mean, in EVE, what's what, what way do you want to do things? Do you want a, a ship that's kind of slow with a humongous cargo capacity? Or do you want to have one of those crazy, like, stealthed up jump freighters? Who knows, right? But it's the sort of thing that when you have true stakes in a player-driven economy, you can do neat things. Now, in the wilderness, they're saying that, uh, well, the further out you go, the more dangerous it becomes. Monsters, mysteries, PvP against rival clans. And then we've got the feature that's maybe a bit more uh, novel and very ambitious here. So, the game is PC first, but it will have a cloud version that can work on consoles and phones. Now, you may hear phones and think, whoa, what the hell? I, I would pop in and say, that probably doesn't mean mobile game. I think that means that if your thing in the game is being a blacksmith, like you don't need to be 
360 crossbow scoping people. The idea of, you know, in, in say an EVE Online, if there is an EVE Online like iPad app and you're an industrial player, you could do a lot of your EVE Online business on your iPad, I suppose, almost like you are that highfalutin business executive that you are playing in the video game. Now, this is all built in Unreal Engine 5, which, funny enough, is why it does indeed look like it's built in Unreal Engine 5. Uh, looks pretty damn good, right? Kind of giving you that promise of, here's the world, go bloody anywhere. And I think that is why this is something that could have quite a strong degree of viral spread. But what have we actually seen so far then? Well, there have been demos that have been hands-off, that have been seen by Polygon and PC Gamer. So, accompanied by two player-controlled companion characters, the party stumbled out of a vaguely Roman ruin, its limestone walls recalling the arches of a 2,000-year-old aqueduct. There, in a corner of a basement closet, were a pair of demons, humanoid forms made of flies. Lovely. Uh, mad sword blows and bright spells uh, visibly lowered its hit points, showers of numbers being seen on the screen as in Borderlands, and the demon was soon dead. I suppose with a game like this, the combat's probably going to be more action combat, less, you know, spreadsheets in space. Anyway, later on in the same settlement, they find a book, they read the book, it alludes to a larger demon nearby, they scout the area, the boss demon is there, um, it's a big towering four-winged pile of filth that just killed the party. Now, these questing elements are uh, basically uh, created by finding in-game text and puzzles, which is making one maybe think it's a more diegetic thing than just a talk to Jim in town and pick up the quest and go and kill some dudes, which I suppose would itself be very different to missioning in EVE Online. Um, again, I'm constantly bringing EVE up here because it's a pretty obvious touch point uh, and also developer lineage where in EVE, there's a lot of PvP, but also you can just go and do missioning, which is kind of like going into a little instance to do some things. There's other PvE as well. Um, but I think here, they're maybe going to go more for that. You and your friends are actually the band of adventurers, and it feels like there's real stakes. But apparently, there was impressive lightning and materials interaction with cloth rippling realistically, hair bouncing, shafts of light catching motes of dust. Uh, basically, the kind of Unreal Engine demo we've seen for years that looks incredible and absolutely not the sort of thing you think of for an MMO. As for Eurogamer, they focused a little bit more on the player-driven nature of the world. So, turns out, no NPCs. There's just monsters. So, uh, you know, you're not going to go into Goldshire and go to the inn and set your hearthstone with an NPC. None. Every settlement is made by players, which means that all the vendors or quest givers are not there. It all comes from players. Um, PC Gamer talked about some of the uh, crafting and base building then. They said that your character starts with nothing and is owned protected by one of the gods. And as you explore the procedurally aided open world and collect resources, you build a home. Uh, it encourages people to form communities or clans in several ways, like giving you larger plots of land when you place them near others. Uh, so you can play the game solo to your heart's content, um, but there's a lot of soft incentive to work together with people. And all of this seemingly is then dovetailing into the player-driven economy. After designating a plot of land, you can start to place walls using gathered items like wood or clay. Over time, you can start to create a village with gardens or workbenches for blacksmiths and alchemy. Uh, gear works like any other RPG, but much of what you equip, ha you know, it has to be created by somebody else. You can inspect items to see their stats and equip them before you face off against the game's various mysterious uh, Lovecraftian enemies, which does sound pretty neat. But of course, decently unclear because this is early. This is early. I think this is... This is really their first marketing beat that's actually getting this game concept out to the wider worlds. Uh, but I do think that it being seemingly a fairly real company made by actual X, you know, MMO developers, um, you know, it, it gives it a level, I think, of concreteness that means it's reasonable to talk about it. I think if this was some sort of, look, if this was a Kickstarter pitch, I wouldn't talk about it, number one, because of the risk of uh, people's money, and number two, because, come on, how, how many Kickstarter games does Kira TV have to kill? <laughs> um, but, you know, for, for good reason, right? There's, in the MMO space, I think quite a lot of, uh, you know, rumbly things that go on. Overall, though, we're kind of unclear about a lot of the big picture, 
We don't know about monetization. It's still an alpha testing. We know that PvP will be opt-in, uh, but they do want to make it high stakes, um, as InWorld has good reasons for like why you want to do uh, PvP. So I imagine if there's high stakes, then if you're in the other end of that, there's a high reward. For class gameplay then, they actually are supporting the Holy Trinity of Tank Healer DPS, but a little bit more flexibility in your play style, gear, and strategies. Uh, you do not pick a class that you're locked into. You define your role with gear, spells, and your play style, which to be honest, I see that and think, oh yeah, Ascension WoW, <laughs> right? You know that WoW private server that's even like so successful it's advertising on Twitter? I have no idea why Blizzard haven't killed it, but there you go. Now, who's making this and what's actually going on? Mainframe. They are founded by veteran devs from Iceland and Finland. Uh, they come from CCP Games, Remedy, Next Games, Rovio, Ubisoft, and with the opening of their office in France, Blizzard Entertainment. So I guess, I don't know, was that some ex-Blizzard Versailles people there? Um, but they're saying that they're bringing their hard-won lessons, good and bad, to this game. Uh, Thor uh, Gunnarsson uh, has been uh, very clear in the past that they are basically here to take MMOs and stuff like that into the next generation. Do you remember how Forspoken, uh, you know, at Luminous Studios, their mission statement was to create, like, games a decade ahead. It feels to me that their vibe is to make an MMO a decade ahead, likely because they, from the very pre-production process, have been taking modern tech stacks into account in their actual design. The creative director here, Rainier uh, Hadars Hadarson? Hadarson? Who knows? Um, he's actually one of the original creators of EVE Online. So again, that's why I bring it up. There is actually a degree of pedigree here. Uh, and they uh, stated uh, that the whole thing is cloud-based. And you may be wondering, what the hell does that mean? You know, does is this a gimmick? I'm worried. For mainframe, the ability to deliver on all platforms and this, you know, level of simulation and immersion typically only seen in high-end PC games means that the visual gap between devices disappears as they move to the cloud. Uh, they see tremendous potential in expense or expansive computing and storage capacity in the cloud. They can make bigger and better games with more complex physics simulation AI and character systems to deliver a fresh gaming experience experience unbounded by the constraints of individual platforms. I think it's just the idea that like the server is a tremendous giga chat that can scale massively. And as for their development plan here, right? So they formed in April with 13 founders opening uh, in Helsinki. They got a 2 million euro seed round from, uh, you can see uh, these various different capital firms public reveal uh, with the opening of the studio in Reykjavik, which is the capital of Iceland. Um, I don't have the photo on me, but when I was last in Reykjavik, like I did go down to the CCP office with the, you know, the EVE Online monument they've got there. It's pretty cool. Um, but it does show like Reykjavik. It's actually, you know, it's got some game things going on, which is pretty cool. Anyway, then they got a 7.6 million Series A Backers here are interesting. Riot Games, who are investing in quite a lot, even as an example, they acquired Hytale, which is uh, a studio, I think, headquartered here in Northern Ireland, but they are uh, global, I think, in their development. And also Andreessen Horowitz. Andreessen Horowitz, you know, they've been very big on a lot of future technologies. Um, some people love them, others clown on them. Who knows? Uh, then they open a studio in Paris, September 2021. They secure 20 million Series B with new backers, including Twitch and King co-founders. Uh, so again, I think that's co-founders who I suppose there have made successful exits and are very wealthy. Then now, uh, March 2023, the reveal of PAX Day. We did actually know about this. We just didn't know... Uh, we didn't know the name uh, because, uh, of course, Jeff Grubb, the serial leaker, did reveal some details. Uh, now, there was actually initial talk of this being an Xbox exclusive. Uh, Grubb said that it raised 23 mil, not from Microsoft, but as a part of the deal, from my understanding, they backed off of that agreement or any potential agreements with Microsoft, and it will probably be a multi-plat, which is probably for the best. Uh, if you're wondering why Microsoft would have been involved there, probably would have been some sort of big strategic deal uh, that also involves a lot of uh, Microsoft Azure, which is their cloud platform. Uh, ultimately then, where are we? Okay, I'll say this. This sounds turbo cool. Is it a low chance of success? Yeah, but a lot of startups are. And that's kind of okay. You have to be able to take big low chance of success bets because guess what? If they do pan out, it ends up being really cool. I'm sure EVE Online was not a high chance of success project when it was first concepted, but goddamn, aren't we glad that EVE Online exists? So, 
my situation with this then is don't pre-order. Don't buy a founder's pack. I mean, you can't, which is why I'm even talking about this in the first place. Um, but I think this gives us a little bit of a glimpse because you know the way you see a tech demo, right? Like you see the, remember the Lumen and Nanite tech demo that had the character just leaping all over the place for Unreal Engine 5. And then we saw the procedural stuff that came out for the, you know, the Matrix movie with its almost photo real looking Matrix city. Um, you know, there's so many things that are just confined to being a tech demo forever. But the thing is, we can actually get little glimpses of games that are being sold to big venture capital firms with a lot of money behind them uh, that are actually based on the most modern, most cutting edge technology. So at the very least, it's pretty cool to see what people can make and the sorts of visions that people could have. The idea of an EVE Online set in a fantasy world where you got these sort of gods, these sort of Lovecraftian enemies, uh, these monsters, where, you know, you, you stumble into this game's version of Stormwind City, but it actually turns out it's owned by a massive player guild with a few hundred people and they've built all these cool things. That is the sort of thing where, you know, other than it being augmented reality or something, we're thinking about the holodeck in Star Trek. And for me, as somebody who's loved science fiction, who fundamentally is passionate about technology, stuff like this is just cool because it shows the amazing projects that humans can put together with the technology that we've created and uh, i think when we see examples of that that is about bringing people together and being social like this well i just think that's a really damn uh, good thing so ultimately i wish them every success because it sounds like if their vision is something that can be pulled off it would be a really cool game to have out there in the market and i could totally see myself playing it it seems like this is something that could far more live up to the promise of uh maybe you know <laughs> new world in 10 years than new world perhaps so let me know what you think about this one and of course if you would like uh, some video game to play we did just recently release the pale beyond you can check it out uh, on steam we've uh, fixed most of the major launch uh, quibbles that unfortunately happened but i've talked about that in another video at the very least i can share all of our lessons with you right um so you know if we do fuck up you're gonna know about it i'm gonna be honest with you about why it happened how it happened and how we want to fix it but uh, it's not like the um you know it's not like it's been a major uh humongous downside because look the pale beyond's done uh, really well critically um even though there have been those issues, like I know that there are loads of people have just reported we've brought them to tears multiple times while playing through the game, which is, I mean, pretty damn incredible. I think for our debut title to be received this well is just absolutely incredible. And it certainly, you know, has me and my co-founder Thomas thinking about where we can go, what we can do, and ultimately the journey that we can go on that then over on the Bellular Studios YouTube channel, the journey that we can share with you. I think it would be really cool. Maybe we're a bigger, more established studio seven or eight, seven, eight, nine years in the future when I'm, I don't know, uh, beginning to hit my 40s, but that we could have actually taken you along the whole journey of making this game studio. You know, when you see everything, I'm like, that's the dream for me. Uh, so you can check out our documentary for the making of The Pale Beyond over in the Bellular Studios channel. You can check out the game on Steam. I hope you found today's video to be interesting. Let me know what you think about this game. I'll see you next time.